So imagine you are in a hospital waiting room while your loved one is undergoing an invasive medical procedure. And something goes terribly wrong, and she does not survive. But no doctor and no nurse comes to apologize or fully explain to you what happened. You're in the dark and alone and devastated, grief-stricken, and scared behind the hospital's wall of silence. I am a physician and an attorney, and I've lived at the intersection of medicine and law for the last 26 years. I want to take you to that intersection. Despite extraordinary advances in medicine over the last several decades, the New England Journal of Medicine just published an article that predicts over the course of the next hour, 70 patients, hospitalized patients, will die or suffer serious injuries due to medical errors. And over the course of the next year, 600,000 hospitalized patients will die or suffer those injuries due to medical errors and mistakes. The economic burden associated with medical errors exceeds billions of dollars every year in the U.S. alone. But compounding those tragedies when words and actions matter most, those who suffer from medical errors will suffer a second harm. Most will not get the information they need or an apology. And many will be outright lied to and information will be withheld. They will be forced to suffer behind that proverbial wall of silence. And you may know patients or families who describe these tragedies in their lives like car crashes. But when it's silence that follows, they feel like victims of a healthcare hit and run. Years ago, as a leader in a major health system, I was complicit. I was complicit in many of these hit and runs. And there's one in particular that continues to haunt me to this very day. For we had a prominent healthcare executive come to our organization. Now, this is a healthcare executive, came to our organization to undergo an elective surgical procedure. And during the course of her workup, her blood test indicated she had cancer in her blood. And that should have caused us to postpone or cancel that surgical procedure. But due to communication errors, the right people never got that information. Our system failed her. She underwent the surgery, and she was discharged from our organization not knowing the diagnosis. Six weeks later, she died from a treatable leukemia, never knowing the diagnosis. And when I learned of this tragic, terrible event, I wanted to reach out to the family, explain what had happened, and to apologize. But I was told by lawyers and the insurance company to stay silent behind the wall. And sadly, and to my regret, I did not have the courage to reach out to that family. And what ensued were four years of scorched earth, delay, deny, and defend, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars defending the indefensible until we settled for millions on the courtroom steps. And we learned little. And those of us who were pressured to stay silent also suffered when we recognized that we had violated our sacred oath to first do no harm by withholding the truth. Shamed by this tragedy and many other tragedies, 
and frustrated by the lack of improvement in healthcare, a small group of bold innovators chose to shatter the wall of silence with extreme honesty to pursue healing and learning after harm in healthcare. And with a change of leadership in our organization, I was allowed to join that group. And we put our team together that developed a comprehensive and principled approach to harm that included a promise, a promise to provide open and honest communication to all patients and families after serious harm events. And if it turns out our care was inappropriate, we would reconcile those cases without the need for litigation. We'd learn from the events and we would support all members of the care team who never intended for harm to happen in the first place. And we called our program the Seven Pillars. And we published manuscripts demonstrating the benefits of transparency. And then something happened that doesn't always happen in life. We got a second chance. I got a chance at redemption. For when Michelle came to our organization, she was a 39-year-old mother of two children undergoing an outpatient GI procedure. And during that procedure, she suffered a cardiac arrest due to excessive sedation and our failure to properly monitor her and rescue her. In that waiting room, her loved ones overheard the code blue. But this time, the facts known to that case were those of us who had responded to that event. But fortunately, this time, with our hearts connected to our head, we were prepared to be extremely honest. We were empowered, unlike years ago when we suffered in our own silence, we were empowered to be honest with this family, and we were. And we apologized, and we reconciled in financial and non-financial ways, and we fixed what was broken that caused Michelle's death. And we provided peer support to every member of that care team who was also suffering having witnessed that harm. And we invited Bob and Barb, Michelle's parents, to join our patient safety efforts, and they did. And with them, we also published further research indicating, amazingly, doing the right thing to do is also the smart thing to do. We published our lessons learned that included transparency improves care. Clinicians feel a lot less, a lot less moral injury when they're allowed to be honest with their patients. And lawsuits and the cost of litigation went down. So with that data, with that information, Bob and Barb and I traveled to Washington, D.C. We were able to convince the U.S. federal government to fund the creation of a healing after harm empathic communication toolkit that became known as CANDOR, Communication and Optimal Resolution, a toolkit all organizations can use to pursue this paradigm shift in healthcare. And my next stop was right here in Southern California, where I began to work with some incredible innovators. And one in particular is the largest professional liability company for hospitals on the West Coast. The first company of its kind to incentivize their insured members to hardwire this holistic and empathic approach to harm. And beautifully and brilliantly, they call their approach Beta Heart, where heart stands for healing, empathy, accountability, resolution, and trust. Another innovator here in San Diego is the University of California, San Diego Health where they are incubating their candor approach with software solutions that drive the reliable approach to harm that includes communication and empathically supporting all members of the care team and learning from these events and leveraging their data 
to prevent harm before it ever happens. We made a lot of progress over the last few years with more than 800 organizations pursuing this holistic and empathic approach. But we have a long way to go because there are thousands of organizations, hospitals, and long-term care facilities that we need to motivate and inspire. And to that end, I'm so excited that I can share that we have partnered with an incredible organization that's called Patients for Patient Safety U.S., an affiliate of the World Health Organization whose mission is to advocate for transparency in healthcare and healing and learning after these harm events. I am confident, confident with all of us working together, pushing and spreading this innovation that we will be able to shatter that wall of silence once and for all. Thank you.